hi guys this is nuclear aphrodite welcome back to my channel today i'll be reviewing the f-16 the mighty f-16 fighting falcon and coincidentally i have this aircraft in delivery of uh, number 11 squadron arrows of pakistan air force as you can see the roundel wait the roundel on the wing and the livery of pakistan air force f-16 aircraft okay so this is the f-16 c block 52 and notice on the nose you can see two red stars which means this aircraft had the unique opportunity to kill shoot down uh, two soviet jets back in the 1980s so we're in the cockpit so before i start the aircraft i'm going to explain you the ergonomics of the cockpit here right in front of you is the heads up display where you can uh, this is also uh, you can also say that this is the basic bore site of the aircraft where you can see the altitude uh, altitude scale altitude indicator airspeed and air, airspeed indicator navigation waypoint pitch ladder horizon and most of the things that pilots rely upon during the flying is the heads-up display this is the integrated control panel here you can see it is written ICP the integrated control panel is used for air to air mode air to ground mode then in configuring the aircraft then IFF UHF COM1 and UHF COM2 here is the button where, is, where it is used to brighten up the heads up display to turn on the heads up display this is used to increase the brightness of the heads up display and these are the similar buttons for the FLIR. Here are the two MFDs, 5.5 inch MFDs, which has a multiple colored, uh, which is which stands for multiple function colored display screen. It has 25 Norton breakdown modes in the air to air modes. It has track while scan, trace while scan, track while scan, range while scan, single target track, velocity search scan. Here is the radar warning receiver and ALR-56. Here is the altitude direction indicator. Here is the altitude indicator. Here is the mock indicator. Here is the angle of attack indicator. Here is the vertical velocity indicator. Here is the backup altitude indicator. Here is the flow, fuel flow indicator which shows the fuel in pounds per hour. On the right side of the aircraft and the instrument panel you can see the oil pressure nozzle position rpm indicator ftit fan turbine inlet temperature then there is fuel quantity indicator then there is a, 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 a backup display of the heading then there is hydraulic pressure a and b and when the aircraft starts the hydraulic pressure should be between uh, 2850 to 3250 psi then this is the EPU fuel indicator then this is the uh, uh, global position this is the time of the aircraft now here on the uh, now th and this is the cabin pressure now on the uh, auxiliary right auxiliary console here are the instruments which I have explained this is uh, this is the instrument panel all right this is the right auxiliary console this this is the right console this is the left auxiliary console and this is the left console so it makes it easier for the pilot to understand where the switches are if I say there is a sensor parallel in the right console so I can I, I can guess I can uh, find out that this is the right console and here is the sensor panel so here's the sensor panel which has FCR, radar altitude display, red, ha uh, right hard point, left hard point turn on. This is the heads up display where you can modify the symbology of the heads up display. This is the lightning panel which controls the interior lightning of the aircraft. This is the air conditioning panel which controls the air conditioning of the aircraft. This is the nuclear concern which controls, controls the nuclear capability of the aircraft. Here's the seat adjustment. If we use this it can increase and decrease the uh, height of the uh, uh, seat since there is no p electric power so this won't work at the moment here's the armrest so it makes it convenient for the pilot to operate this fly-by-wire notice as I move the fly-by-wire it moves 
one sixteenth of an inch so this is the one of the unique things of about the f-16 the f-16 was the world's first fully electronic fighter this is the oxygen indicator this is the avionics power which powers the avionics this is the anti-ice indicator and this is where the data cartridge unit of the f-16 is placed and all the data is stored navigation air to air mode air to ground mode electronic warfare mode electronic jamming mode iff everything okay so this was the right console right auxiliary console instrument panel now here is the fuel quantity selection in the instrument panel here you can select normal reserve internal wing external wing external center and this is the fuel transfer it should be normal or wing first so i can switch it to wing first or normal it depends upon the pilot okay here on the left side of this uh, uh, instrument panel you can see master caution here's the fault ironics check here's the idle uh, iff detent here's the mode which is used to silent all the uh, reduce or remove all the radio frequency that is dispersed by the aircraft this is the laser arm just the master arm this is the pitch hold and the roll hold this is the hook deck arrested hook which arrests the cable if there's any fault in the wheel brakes or the drag chute coincidentally this aircraft does not carry a drag chute on its tail so there is uh, no drag shoot option over here here's the landing lights here's the electronic warfare pa panel countermeasure display system cmd as you can see written over here here's the uh, 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 knob where you can turn on the joint helmet mounting queuing system from here you turn on the radar warning receiver of the f-16 as you can see power altitude surge activity power okay this is the throttle quadrant of the f-16 this is the button which is used to uh, open and close the canopy notice as i do this the canopy starts closing see the canopy has closed now i'll start big uh, uh, start to now I'll start beginning the uh, 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 startup of this aircraft now I'll put, put this canopy uh, 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 button canopy holder down so that I can lock the canopy here's the audio panel here's the electronic countermeasure panel here's the airborne video tape recorder panel here's the electronic uh, control panel here's the fuel flow fuel panel this is the IFF panel this is the exterior lightning panel this is the trim panel this is the flight control panel and this is the test panel so there are so many things in this aircraft that if i start explaining every single thing and every single control at time it will take a lot of time for viewers to understand so i'll cut it short and keep it simple so the first thing that we need to see before turning on the f-16 is that the fuel flow master fuel is turned on and the clip is turned down then the engine feed is switched to normal then the electric power should be turned on to battery first if the uh, generator says standby generator main generator and flcs rly it means that the battery is normal the battery has power then uh, sorry then we have to switch to main power then we have to check the fuel quantity selection since there is no uh, uh, tank on the external hard point i can switch it to normal and wind trans external fuel transfer to normal because if i do wings first it is going to take uh, fuel from the wings first but there is no need so i'll switch it to normal and fuel quantity selection to normal then i jump to engine air source to normal and then i'll see if my oxygen supply is turned on so here here is the oxygen supply it turns on from this mode and the oxygen supply selector which can be set to at 100% or normal and then the oxygen mask 
means you can test the mask either it or you can switch it to normal or emergency so it has to be switched to normal this can also be normal and it has to be turned on now I'll jump back to jet fuel starter which has to be switched to number two now notice as I do this the engine RPM starts rolling the FTIT temperature will start will begin to increase as soon as I reach 20 percent RPM and I do the idle detent so I've reached the 20 percent RPM now I'll do the idle detent means this needle this throttle uh, grip will come to this place let's do the idle detent I've done the throttle idle detent means the fuel is supplied to the engine directly and the FTIT increases and the temp uh, throttle percent also increases to 60 percent now as soon as it does so I will turn on the fire control radar the radar altitude to normal INS selector to normal so that I can align the inertial navigation system multi machine computer on S S S T S T A on I don't know what it is global position system on data link on MFD on upfront controls on map on now as I do so the MFD turns on the heads up display turns on and the brightness turns on and here you can see the INS starts to get aligned notice in the GF1700 it just take 40 seconds to align the INS however in the S16 unless the, this reaches 08.0 I'll have to wait until the INS is aligned or I either I can choose to align the INS through this in-flight alignment but since there is no emergency so I can wait okay now here in the fault avionics panel you can see it is shown seat not arm so I have to arm the seat from this page from this place now I have to turn on the radio to manual from manual to both UHF VHF and see if the COM1 COM2 buttons are on coincident uh, uh, unfortunately the throttle grip is positioned in such a way that uh, you cannot see the COM1, COM2 button but it, is, it has been on the miscellaneous warning lights uh, uh, miscellaneous tone has also been turned on the thread uh, knob has also been turned on now what I have to do is turn on the exterior lights of fuselage wing tail then I have to turn on the master light to normal then I have to switch this to flash and then I have to turn on anti-collision lights also now notice as you can see all the lights externally have been turned on since there is no air to air refueling that will uh, there, since there is no air to air refueling that will need to happen during this mission so I'll have to turn this off okay now then I have to turn on the missile uh, uh, warning system radar warning receiver I don't have to turn on the jammer because there is no jammer on the center line of this aircraft or the uh, wings of the aircraft now turn on the first cartridge second cartridge chaff and flare now I have to turn on this mode also this has many more standby manual semi auto and BIP the best way is BIP where you can control the cartridge uh, uh, of the uh, chaff and flare manually notice as I turn on there are 60 flares and 60 chaff on this aircraft by default which is a good configuration now I have to turn on the radar warning receiver by pressing this button switch this to low altitude so that it can also uh, search uh, the uh, SAM system that are low altitude then turn on the search button now notice that there's a small dot 
that is blinking on the radar warning receiver means means that it is operating it is in operating mode okay we have reached the INS to 3.7 all right now what I'm going to do is align the backup altitude direction indicator I'll just pull this knob and this has been aligned now I have to see if my altitude direction indicator this one is also aligned now okay this is the navigation this gets aligned as soon as the INS gets aligned so I'll have to wait for the INS to get aligned okay now I'll have to also align the altitude barometer altitude this is the barometer altitude I have to switch it to zero for a good pilot it's very good to rely on its instruments and align the instruments on ground before the pilot takes off because it is very necessary in, term, in times of emergency or when you lose your digital controls the pilot has to rely on the hydraulic and, anal and analog controls since F-16 is a hybrid aircraft so it has advantages and disadvantages also the advantages is it has digital flight control computer a radar modern multi-mode post doctor radar a very good sensor system electronic warfare system but it is also hybrid in nature since this is block 52 so it is hybrid in nature okay now i have to turn on the nose wheel steering notice as I do so the AR and NWS light switch on and you can see the nose wheel steering is moving I have to turn on the landing lights okay now I have to see the briefing so that I can communicate with the air traffic control tower on the frequency Two five six zero zero. Sushi in field one one. Request startup. In field one one. Sushi clear for startup. Sushi in field one one. Request taxi to runway. Now notice that I have Now I'm going to increase the time compression so that I can come up to the runway and then I can just start the aircraft and just show the viewers how it is to fly an American F-16 with Pakistani Air Force livery Now my INS is aligned I have switched it to navigation and press this return button just to return ok now I'll begin moving my aircraft to the runway okay, now I'm steering my aircraft all the way to the runway So here's the F-16 in Pakistan Air Force livery. It's a very beautiful livery. For guys who are enthusiasts like me, they can just log on to DCS World and they can download any livery they want to.
Okay, we are almost near the runway. And we are about to take off. Align my aircraft with the runway. I'll press the wheel brakes down. I'll increase the throttle gradually and monitor my engine RPM, nozzle position, FTIT temperature. Check for fault avionics and everything is if everything is fine. I'm going to release my brakes and then full turn on full afterburners. And there we go. We are about to take off. We are airborne. So guys, that's it for today. And stay tuned for more. Keep watching this channel and if you like my page then do subscribe thank you very